Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. You know the score by now of how this works. You simply comment your question underneath previous week's Tech Clinic and use the hashtag AskGCNTech. I pick out the questions and answer them as best as I can. So without further ado, let's go to our first question. First up this week is a question from Matthew Acton Varian. They say, greetings all. I recently discovered a polarizing debate on the use of tubeless tires on carbon rim brakes. Okay, it's a long question, this one. Some people believe that if you use all the correct equipment, everything will be fine. Others say that you should avoid this technology on carbon rim brakes due to a lack of heat dissipation, causing potentially dangerous temperatures. So they're saying they're considering swapping their setup onto their summer bike, which they use on their winter bike. However, they're a little bit cautious about using the carbon rims. They've got all of the stuff ready to go, but just want a bit of input. So. I would say if you follow all of the guidance of the manufacturer, use the correct equipment in the correct manner, I don't see any way of how you're gonna run into any complications or any situation that could potentially be dangerous. Now, I've been using carbon rims and tubeless tires for ages now with absolutely no issue like that whatsoever. I mean, if you use the equipment incorrectly, you could run into some problems, but providing you do everything how it's intended to be set up, you should have no issue whatsoever and you'd be perfectly safe. Next question in is from Andrew Birdsey. Andrew Birdsey. They say, hey, Alex and Ollie, I wonder if you could help. I've got some fancy all-in-one carbon bar and stem on my bike, and I'm upgrading the bike to Campagnolo Chorus 12-speed. Can be recommended torque setting of 10 Newton meters for the shifters, whereas Shimano, just six. Is there a risk of cracking the carbon bars at 10 Newton meters? And why is the Campag torque setting so much higher? Well, first off, the difference between the two torque settings is purely down to what each manufacturer feel is safe and suitable for their shift up. So Shimano decide that it's a bit lower than what Campag have decided for. But in terms of the risk of damaging your all-in-one one-piece carbon handlebar, you simply need to check with the manufacturer of that carbon handlebar what the maximum torque setting is for the clamp area where the shifter would go. That way you're not gonna run into any complications. Now, if the handlebar is rated up to a torque setting of 10 Newton meters, happy days. However, it is very important that you don't exceed that rating that is given by the handlebar manufacturer. Otherwise, you could run into a sticky situation and end up with some damaged handlebars. Next up is a question from Kevin Little John. It says, hi, Alex, Ollie and Manon. I'm getting a new bike with DI2 and I'm thinking of getting a chain catcher. Is this necessary to do so with DI2? No, 100% not, it's not necessary. A correctly, a correctly set up front derailleur, whether that's mechanical or electronic, will not require a chain catcher. Now, it's something that many people do fit, and in my instance, I'd probably say it's a good idea to fit one, because in the unlikely or unfortunate situation that you do manage to drop your chain, maybe, you do a badly time gear change, or you go over a giant pothole, or if you're just really unlucky, then the chain catcher will save you from damaging the paintwork on your frame, or even worse, damaging the frame itself. So it's there as a sort of fail-safe backup, really, rather than something that's necessary. Next question from the crazy hat chemist. These usernames are great, keep those coming. Is there a portable charger, like the ones used in cell phones, that can be carried with you to recharge your DI2? Yes, there are, you can use exactly the same power banks that you can use to charge up your phones or any other USB devices. It just needs to have a USB port on it and you'll be um, ready to go. Easy, you pretty much answer that yourself. Next question is from Tank Bird Finder. They say, hi, technical gang. When changing front chain rings, is it recommended to place grease or any other substance between the actual chain ring tab and the crank that is sandwiched between by the bolts? believe the bolts just need a bit of grease, as per Alex. It's hopefully you've taken on my advice. And generally it's aluminium on metal. Um, first time changing these, thanks in advance. No, no need to put any grease on the tabs. Now and again, I do if I'm thinking about it and I've got the time, but I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. Sometimes I would fit the chain ring straight on the bike, no grease, a little bit of grease on the bolt, like you say, but it's not really a requirement because that face where the chain rings meet isn't, or it shouldn't move, provided you torque the bolts up correctly. Next question is from Sardinator. Hey folks, can someone please make a video on how to remove the rear wheel with a SRAM Red ETAP derailleur? I find it very difficult to do this and the basic step of putting the chain onto the smallest sprocket doesn't help. There's no videos on the internet, how can I do it? 
Well, over the years, we've made a couple of videos explaining how to remove your rear wheel, but admittedly, we haven't made a video for every different type of rear derailleur, um, axle and brake setup for all the different bikes, but the principles remain the same. And the key thing that you need to get right is pivoting the rear derailleur back and all the way out of the way. So you can then loosen off your brake if you've got rim brake, undo the quick release, the through axle, pivot that derailleur all the way out of the way, then you can even lift the bike up and drop the wheel down. And that is the key part to getting right. But like any skill, practice makes perfect. So the more you do it, the better at it you'll get. And then hopefully you have no, no trouble whatsoever. Right, on to our last question for this week. It's from Nick Christie. They say, hey, Dream Team, can you tell me if I use an oval chainring up front and I'm fitting a new chain, does it matter if the longest part of the chainring is vertical or horizontal? And does it matter how many links I need to add? So if you're using an oval chainring and you're fitting it onto a bike that had a round chainring on, if the number of teeth on the oval one are the same as the round one, you can keep the chain exactly the same length. Now, if you're replacing the chain and you haven't got a reference point or you're building up a new bike, there is a fairly simple method that you can use to calculate how long the chain needs to be because it will vary depending on the position that you have that chain ring sat. So the easiest way of doing this is a method that I've talked through previously on a video explaining how to get your chain the correct length. Now this includes a few little calculations and you're gonna need a tape measure. So first step is measure the length of your chain stay. So from the center point of the rear wheel through to the center point of the crank. Measure that in inches to the nearest 0.25 or quarter of an inch. Write that number down. Then you're gonna to need to know, well, you need to multiply that number by two first. So then you're gonna to need to know the chain ring size of the largest chain ring. So then divide that by four, make a note of that number. The largest sprocket on the cassette on the back, make a note of that, divide it by four. Once you've got those three numbers, add them up, add one to that total, and that'll give you the number of inches that your chain needs to be. Whew, a little bit complicated to get all that out. Once you've got that measurement and you can hold your chain up next to it, if you're struggling to get the chain length exactly spot on, always err on the side of caution and add an extra link or two onto your chain because you can always make it a little bit shorter afterwards. And it's better to have a slightly longer chain than a chain that is a little bit too short. There you go. Hope you found this week's Tech Clinic helpful. Once again, apologies if I didn't get to your question, but do keep submitting it in the comments section down below. Badger away at us, maybe question, write your question multiple times if you really want it. It'll help, help me pick it out for next week. Right, that's it. I'll um, leave you guys to it. I'll see you here same time next week. Ciao.